Hey you guys, so I have been working on a project in this month of September. So the past few weeks I have been making homemade sauerkraut. It is something I do often. We love to have it and it's a great nutritional probiotic for you to have on hand. So if you like sauerkraut, I got a really quick video to show you how I do it. Um, I will also, oh, let me grab something really quick. I'll talk more about it later, but this is the kit that I have the mason top fermenting kit. This is a complete fermentation kit. So you get this um, press, you get the pickle pipes that you see on my jar here. All you need are some wide mouth jars, your cabbage and all your things you need for the salt and some spices. And you can make homemade sauerkraut and any other fermentation really quick. Cause there's also a recipe book that comes in this kit as well. Now I'm not sponsored. This company does not know I exist. I've had this for years and years and years. I got it for my birthday one year. And I just love it. So today we're going to taste this at the end, but first we're going to jump back several weeks and show you where I started with the head of cabbage and how we got to this point. And then once we do that, I'll show you how I check on it a little bit and then we'll come back and we will taste this and see if it's ready to put in the fridge. So let's get started making our homemade sauerkraut. So here's a look at what we're going to need to make the sauerkraut. I just use, I have this complete um, fermentation kit for mason top. I have had this for years. It is super handy. It comes with um, this packer or actually let me see what it's, it fits wide mouth jars. It comes with um, these uh, weights, the clear glass weight, four of the pickle pipes, which are these in random colors, and then the pickle packer. And yeah, it also comes with a book with lots of recipes in it. And I'm actually following the Mason Top, which is a brand name here, recipe for this. Um, it calls it German sauerkraut. It's just sauerkraut to me. But I'm going to show you how I make it. And I'm going to use all this. And, of course, you need a Mason jar. And then this is a cabbage. Their recipe calls for a two-pound cabbage. Mine was a little bit over. It was like 2.3. Um, it was a little bit larger, but I had to take a bunch of the outer leaves off. And then I am going to put some dill weed. Salt, of course, you need, always need salt and sauerkraut and some whole celery seeds. And it calls for um, half a teaspoon. No, it calls for a teaspoon of celery seed or dill. But I want both in mine because I like the flavor. So I'm going to do a half a teaspoon of celery seeds and a half a teaspoon of dill to make up my one um, teaspoon. And then I'm going to use salt. So I'm going to go ahead and put on some gloves and show you how I mix it up. Okay, so this is the cabbage. It calls for a tablespoon of finely ground salt. Um, all I had was the kosher salt, the big salt, so I just ground some up in my coffee grinder, and we're just going to put that in. I'm going to put it in just a little bit at a time, and then I'm going to add my seasonings. The recipe, and I'll link it below for you, it actually says to um, layer this in, but I've already put it in a bowl, and I'm not going to redo it because I don't want to dirty up another bowl. So I'm going to put my half a teaspoon of celery salt. And you guys, it says, it gives you a few options in the recipe and my half a teaspoon of dill. Then I'm going to do the, put on my glove really quick. And so because what now you're going to do is just kind of massage the salt. And I'm going to have to put some more in it. That's still sitting over here, you can see. And because you're going to put this in, not only is it going to season the cabbage that will be cold, become sauerkraut, not coleslaw. It's also going to help keep it safe during the ferment. The salt is what's going to help the balance stay good. Okay. And it's going to have that full amount of salt. So I'm going to put that in. So that puts my tablespoon of finely ground salt in there and now I'm just going to massage this and squeeze as I do. You're going to want this to make liquid because the liquid is going to have to come up over the cabbage in your jar and that's going to make your brine that and the salt. So the liquid that the cabbage reduces and the salt. All right, so just going to massage it for a few minutes and then I'm going to leave it set probably for about an hour or two and every once in a while I'm going to come back and do this massaging technique and you can see how wet it's getting. You may not can, but anyway, just going to let it set. I'm going to cover it with something so no 
nothing can get inside. And then I'm gonna let it set here on the counter for a couple of hours and I'll come back, probably for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half, and come back every once in a while and use my gloved hand and massage and squeeze it. So I won't bore you with all that. I'll ring you back when it's time to pack it into our jar. So see you in a bit. Okay guys, so I have worked with this now, actually a couple of hours. You can see the liquid, hopefully in the bottom. I don't know if it's gonna be enough. I always keep a little bit of uh, purified water. You don't wanna do tap water um, in a little jar over here off the side, just in case I need some more. But I'm also gonna use my pickle popper here, pickle piper. No, but still not yet. Tongue twister for sure. Pickle packer that comes in that mason top fermentation camp. I have my uh, pickle pipe and my weight. Um, I'm just going to go ahead. I think this is, this cabbage is really strung down, so it's probably not going to do a full. Let's get, let's get you guys back some so you can see. Probably not going to do a full jar, but so that means I'm going to have to really watch it and make sure that it doesn't. Do that. I don't have any wide mouth. Um, don't have any wide mouth. Um, man, I cannot talk today. I can't, don't have any wide mouth pints uh, that are clean and available right now. I'm making a mess here. Make sure you don't make a mess like me. But, and when you just pack it, you want to pack it down. You can see the liquid that comes up. See it over that? That's what you want because your brine, you want to make sure everything is clean when you're wiping stuff down. So use a clean towel, clean pickle packer. So as I was saying, you want as you pack it down, and this is not going to fill my jar, but that's okay. Um, you pack it down so that the liquid or the brine that the cabbage has created on its own, it's going to be enough to cover the sauerkraut in the jar so I'm going to set this over here I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of the juice in there because I want all that brine I'm going to scrape the rest of the cabbage out into my jar make sure I get all that let me set this over here okay now I'm going to take my glove off because I am done touching the product. And I just use gloves when I'm working with my ferments because I don't want, oh yeah, that made a good liquid amount. See that? When we push it down with the weight, it'll help even more. I don't like to put my hands, like uncovered hands in my ferments just because I, I don't want to put anything in there that may cause it to mold. So I'm gonna wipe all this down too in just a minute to make sure it's sterilized. But now I'm gonna move this, give me just a second. And I'm gonna wipe this jar down. And I will wipe it down again with a wet rag before I put it. So it looks like this is gonna have good, um, enough liquid. I may go over and do the pickle packer. Just get it down off the side. Because key, you don't want any of the cabbage above the brine. Because that will, you know, that'll make a easy target for mold or, yeah, mold. So you want to make sure all the cabbage is below the brine. So I'm going to pack it down a little bit more. Okay, so there's that. So... Then what I do is I take some leaves of the cabbage and I cover the surface. These are just the out, some of the outer leaves that were still okay. And I just rinsed them really good. And you cover the surface. This is gonna also help keep the stuff under the, that's a little bit too big, so I'm gonna change that. Help, it also helps to keep the cabbage under a brine. Every day I'll check it though, you know, to make sure nothing's come above as it rises. Okay, and this is just gonna also help keep the air 
away from the cabbage that's in there. So then I have sterilized this pickle weight. I am gonna go ahead and put it on top. Let's see if you guys can see that. See in there? And you're gonna push it down. Now, okay, so if anything is above the brine, like you don't want that cabbage leaf, you're gonna try and poke it down. Let me get a clean something to poke it down with. There we go. So I'm gonna poke all my cabbage, like the top leaves that I'm covering with, under the brine, under that weight. Again, you don't want any of it to be exposed, if you can help it. So there's that, and I'll check it daily. So there we go. There is plenty of brine in that. So even though we didn't get a full jar of cabbage, look at that good brine. You need that salty brine because it is going to help ferment this safely. So there you go. And then what you're gonna do is put your pickle pipe right on the top. And you're going to put a lid on the top, which I did not grab, did I? I did it. So, just a second. Okay, so I have a lid, and it just fits right down over the pickle pipe, and you close it. Screw it on like you would. And that's it. So... Now it is going to ferment on the counter, depending. Um, I usually, I think mine usually takes about two to three weeks. So we're gonna check it as we go. Can you see all that? It looks like I may have to go in there and check for anything above the brine. And I do that on a daily basis. I'm really liking how much liquid this gave off, how much brine. But because this pickle pipe has a hole up here that opens up, can you see that? This will let the um, gases that build up in here release through this pole. But what I do is I set this in a dark, cool place on a, in a bowl or on a plate that has a lip because it may very well bubble out, okay? So just have it as a precaution sitting on something so you don't make a mess, but put it in a cool, dark place and just watch it every day check it you know make sure take your lid off make sure there's no cabbage or anything floating on the top if there is push it back down or remold uh, push it back under there or remove it and then just make sure you're checking for mold and i will bring you this is day one which is all, uh, september the 5th so i will bring you back as this ferments and show you the journey i can't wait we love fresh sauerkraut. Okay, so I am going to check the sauerkraut. It is uh, now September the 8th, so it's got a little bit of dark color to it. So I'm just gonna go in here. Let me see. I'm gonna take it off this plate and use this plate to skim this out. And of course, the seat, the, um, Spices will have something to do with the color of your brine as well. Remember, we put dill, salt, and celery seeds in here. And so, what you're doing is you're just making sure you get all the pieces of like this that got out from under the weight that's still covered in liquid. First, you want to make sure everything is still covered in liquid. And then we're just cleaning the jar. We're going to try and the spices. I'm going to try and get some of those out, but mainly I'm trying to get the cabbage pieces that you'll see. See like that? I'm going to try and get those off. And you're just making sure there's no, sorry about that, no mold or anything like that present in your brine. And again, you want to make sure all the cabbage is colored in the brine, covered in the brine. So I'm just going to go ahead and finish this. I'm going to put the pickle pipe and the lid back on it and put it back in the cabinet. So before we jump in, I wanted to give you a couple more things. Sauerkraut is one of the more easier things to ferment. It doesn't, it's not labor intensive. Anybody can start out with. It's a great one for you to start. I'm not a huge fermenter. The only things I have successfully fermented is sauerkraut and I do kombucha, which I have. I can't see it, but it's over there. Got a whole mess going on in my cabinets because I'm 
making chickpea tofu and got my kombucha mess up. So anyway, messy kitchen. But anyway, I'm not a huge fermenter. I'm still learning, but sauerkraut I have made for years and it's super easy and nutritious. So I'll put a link to that kit I just showed you in the description below if you want to take a look. There is a recipe in that book that comes with the kit on how to make sauerkraut. It's super easy to follow. Main thing is you want to make sure everything is sterile and clean before you start. And you want to keep everything clean as it ferments. Like you want to check for mold or any um, debris or anything above the brine or above the weight so you don't get any mold. Now, you may see some calm yeast, which you can read about that. I'll put some links below because I'm not an expert. My friend Anna over at the Fermented Homestead, when I first started making things, I had to ask her about this white uh, floaty stuff that was on. I can't remember what I was trying to think. I was making apple cider vinegar. Oh, sorry, I forgot to do that from apple scraps. But anyway... Um, it's a white, uh, floaty looking. It's not really mold, but it looks like a yeast. It's really white. Anyway, let me link below because I'm not an expert. That way, in case you see it, you'll know what to look for. All right, guys, it is September the 26th. This has been going um, for a few weeks now. You can see um, it is still in there. And the color here, the liquid, is from the spices that we put in there. Remember, we put in celery seed um, and some dill and other things in it. So we're going to turn you down and check it. Like, there's been no leakage, but I think that's because my jar was not as full as it normally is when I make sauerkraut. So, that was good. I actually didn't have any messes, but it's always wise to put a plate or something underneath it. So, that if it does bubble up from the gases, uh, you will have protection from it being in your cabinet. So, you don't want any sticky. You can see. Let's turn you down and look at it here. You can tell it's still got brine in there and you don't see any mold. I'm going to smell it smells like a mild sauerkraut. It's been colder here, and well, actually we've been keeping it colder in our house. It's still in the 90s here, but I'm going to lower this so you guys can see a little bit better as I take stuff out. So give me just a minute to adjust you guys. All right. Can you see that? All right. So there's just some spices and things uh, floating on top. We're going to remove that weight, and I'm going to give it a taste. We're going to see if we can remove the weight. And you can see down in the, you see those are the, right here is the cabbage leaves that we have put on top. We're going to put those right there. That's the cabbage leaves that we kind of layered on top. You saw me do that um, to kind of keep the little bits because I keep mine shredded underneath it. So we're just going to pull that top part off. Those bigger leaves to actually get to the shredded part all right so let's see I'm gonna stir it up a little bit look at that and mine is kind of like chopped I did mine in a food processor you don't have to do that it's better if you shred it but I um, just did it chopped here so I am going to you don't ever want to put dirty um, forks or anything into this jar so this is a clean fork and I am going to go ahead and taste it to see if it is fermented enough for us and then um, if it's not we'll weight it down again and put it out so let me turn you up and let's try it mm. Ooh, it's sour it's definitely a sauerkraut guys mmm I can taste the celery seed and the dill. So it gives it a more, closing that, sorry. It gives it a real depth of flavor and it's good. It still has a little crunch to it, which is what I prefer. I don't like my sauerkraut to be mushy. So to me, this is perfect. And I will put the date right here that we started that. So this has been going a few weeks. It's been in a cool, dark place and it has fermented and it is now sauerkraut. This is a great probiotic for you. It's great on salads. It's great on beans. It's great on hot dogs. If you eat hot dogs, um, we don't eat hot dogs per se, but we do have some uh, like beef franks every once in a while or Italian sausage. And this is so good. The sourness will uh, cut the fattiness of the pork and it's excellent. So I like to buy mine. You don't have to, I mean, I like to make mine rather than buy it, but I believe there are some, I know Azure Standard has some and I've seen some at my local health food store where you can buy the live cultured sour cream that, uh, sour cream. 
I'm all over the place this morning. But the live cultured sauerkraut that hasn't been pasteurized, so you get that healthy probiotic. So, but it's so easy. You guys saw how easy. It's basically you just shred it up, season it, get all the liquid out, the brine, jar it up, and just watch it like once or twice a week. Just check on it, make sure there's no mold, make sure it's, everything is under your brine, and you have homemade sauerkraut that is really good for you if you like it. So that's it, you guys. That is all you have to do. This is done. I'm not going to ferment it anymore because it's plenty sour. So I'm going to put a lid, wipe everything down, put a lid on it, and put it in the refrigerator so it will hold. This will hold uh, for several months in your refrigerator as it is, but make sure you put it in the refrigerator with an airtight lid so it stops that ferment and it will stay good. So there you have it, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this short video on how to make homemade sauerkraut. And I hope you're having some fun adventures in your kitchen. And until the next video, you guys, I will see you later.